Hello, biologists. My name is Greg Kowalki. I teach biology at Cleveland High School. Today, we're going to work through lesson 4.2, inheritance practice, where we're going to practice some of the things that you learned in the last lesson. First of all, though, I would like to review some of the key points on how to use this PowerPoint. First and foremost, work at your own pace. Your health and your family come first. This would be a great lesson to work through with a colleague through text or email or phone call or whatever. Uh, some of these problems are kind of difficult and it'd be great to be able to talk through it with a colleague uh, and have them check your work. Our goals for this PowerPoint, by the end of this you should be able to identify the genotype and phenotype of an individual given information about their genes. You should be able to predict the possible gametes produced by an individual given their genotype and or phenotype. And you should be able to use egg sperm charts, also known as Punnett squares, to predict possible genotypes and phenotypes. Before we get started though, I want to start out with a warm up. In this one, we're returning to talk about the Cherwibbles again. We have two parents, Elizabeth and Chandru, and we are looking at their chromosomes number one. So we have Elizabeth's pair of chromosome one on the left, and Chandru's pair of chromosome one on the right. With those chromosomes, I'd like you to explain and draw how it is possible that their daughter, Chebecca, has this pair of chromosome one. All right, look at it carefully. There's a little bit of a tricky bit here and there. I also want you to talk about how Chelizabeth and Chandru have noticed that all of their children with curly fur also have a round jaw. Explain why this is. Your teacher may have you uh, submit your answers online or just draw it out or so on. They will let you know how they want you to turn in your warm up. So at this point, I'd like you to pause this video, do the warm up, and we'll come back together whenever you're done. And we're back. Done with the warm up. Let's move on to practicing some of the skills we need to be able to uh, identify the percent chance of a specific genotype or a phenotype in an offspring based upon the genotype or phenotype of the parents. And there is really a specific order of operations you should do whenever you're approaching these genetics problems. First thing is, based upon the description that you're given, you should be able to identify the genotypes of the parents. Remember that's a pair of alleles, so two letters, uh, two alleles of a gene. Once you have the genotype of the parents, you should be able to identify the possible gametes that each parent produce. What are the possible genotypes of the egg or the sperm? Remember with meiosis that you independently sort the different alleles of the parents. So in each egg or sperm, you have one allele or one letter. Having that information, you should be able to you next complete the egg sperm chart, the Punnett square. You put the possible sperm on one side and the possible eggs across the top and then fill out the rest of the egg sperm chart. Once you have that egg sperm chart, that Punnett square completed, you then can easily identify the percent possibility of each possible offspring genotype. Remember in a very simple monohybrid cross, that's a four squared uh, Punnett square, each one of the quadrants is 25%. And then based upon what you know about which one is dominant and which one is recessive, you should also be able to calculate the percentage of each possible offspring phenotype. Let's practice the first couple together here. So given these genotypes, we have five different parents here, what are the possible gametes? What are the genotypes of the egg or sperm that these individuals can produce. So pause this video, try these five genotypes, and we'll come back and check your answers in a moment. So pause right here. Let's check your work, what the possible gametes are for these genotypes. The first one is homozygous dominant. And that means that that individual had two alleles that are uppercase, so uppercase T and uppercase T, which means the gametes that it can produce once those two alleles are separated and placed in 
individual egg or sperm, that can either be an uppercase T or an uppercase T are the two possible gametes that that individual can produce. The next one down is heterozygous for the T gene, which means it has an uppercase T and a lowercase T. And it can produce gametes that either have an uppercase T or a lowercase T. The third one is homozygous recessive, which means that it has all of the lowercase alleles. So it can produce a lowercase a, a, a sperm or egg or a lowercase a sperm or egg. Fourth one is heterozygous for the gene B, which means that it can produce gametes that are an uppercase B or a lowercase B. And the last one, we have two genes. So we have um, the D gene and the B gene, and we were looking at an individual that was heterozygous for D and heterozygous for B, which means that we can produce four different gametes. All right, this is very much like uh, simple algebra and binomial multiplication in algebra. Remember FOIL, first, outer, inner, last? Well, you can use that whenever you're doing two different genes and trying to figure out the possible gametes. So we have the parent here that was heterozygous for both the gene D and the gene B after meiosis the gametes from this individual would get one allele for the gene D and one allele for the gene B. So to figure this out, again, use FOIL first. So we could have a, a gamete that has an uppercase D and an uppercase B, that's this one here. Outer, uppercase D, lowercase B, there we go. Inner, lowercase D, lowercase, or uppercase B, that one right here. And then last, lowercase d, lowercase b, this one here. So there are four possible gametes with an individual that was heterozygous for the gene D and the gene B. All right, making sense? Let's try these as kind of word problems. All right, so I have four questions here. Um, there's enough information in all of them to figure out the genotype of this individual and therefore you can figure out what the possible gametes that these individuals can produce. So pause this and we'll come back and check your work in a moment. All right, let's check your answers for these four practice problems. In the first case, we have a dog that is homozygous dominant for fur color, which means its genotype is uppercase B, uppercase B. With that genotype for this dog, it can make gametes that are, have either an uppercase B genotype or an uppercase B genotype. All right, hope that makes sense. And then we have a cat that's heterozygous for the gene T, which is for tabby stripes. So this cat's genotype is uppercase T, lowercase T, which means it can produce gametes that have the allele uppercase T or the allele lowercase t. Question three, we have a horse that is homozygous recessive for a gene E, which is for blue eyes. It's homozygous recessive, which means that this horse's genotype is lowercase e, lowercase e, which means when it produces gametes, it can produce gametes that either have the lowercase allele or the lowercase allele. Lastly, in question four, we're looking at a pumpkin and we're looking at two genes at the same time. So this pumpkin is homozygous dominant for the G gene, which is for growing giant pumpkins, and it is heterozygous for the gene O, which is for color. So the genotype of this individual is uppercase G, uppercase G, uppercase O, lowercase O which means the gametes that it can produce have the genotypes listed below. I won't go through all of them. But just to remind you, whenever you're looking at two genes at the same time, what's called a dihybrid cross, use FOIL, just like you would in algebra, to figure out the possible gametes. I'd like you to practice this uh, on the 4.2 Puppy Practice Problems Worksheet. It goes through all of these things as well as has you do some egg sperm charts 
and figure out the percent chances of different genotypes and phenotypes in the offspring. So go do that. We'll come back and check your understanding in a moment. All right, now that you've done the worksheet and watched this video, let's check your understanding. Can you identify the genotype and phenotype of an individual if you're given information about the genes? Can you predict the possible gametes produced by an individual if you're given their genotype and or phenotype? And can you use egg sperm charts, also called Punnett squares, to predict the possible genotypes and phenotypes of the offspring? All right. Make an entry in your learning tracking tool titled Making Gametes and Inheritance. Explain what we've learned today. Explain how that learning helps you figure out how a potentially deadly disease can persist through a family over time. Record any questions you still have. And self-assess, how are you doing on this learning? All right. Thank you very much. Be safe, be well, and wash your hands.